Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and <laughs> look, I got my DC Defenders hat on. Now, of course, the jersey I have on is an Ohio State jersey, but even that is kind of relevant. But I'm wearing it mainly because it's a red jersey, and I haven't bought my Defenders jersey just yet. But it is relevant because the starting quarterback for the DC Defenders is expected to be Cardale Jones, who went to Ohio State and uh, who also had a very brief NFL career in which he was 6 for 11 passing for 96 yards and one interception. No touchdowns. So anyway, Cardale Jones expected to be the, the starting quarterback. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk a little bit about the DC Defenders and then I'm going to give everybody my picks for week one of the XFL season. Um, of which I know very little about any of the teams. So, um, you know, you're going to be learning about the league just like me at the same time. So the head coach of the Defenders is Pep Hamilton. Um, he was most recently, NFL-wise, he was the offensive coordinator for the um, Indianapolis Colts from 2013 to 2015. And he was also the Browns assistant head coach and quarterback coach in 2016. He also was the assistant head coach and passing uh, offensive passing coordinator at the University of Michigan in um, 2017, I think. So he's got some coaching experience, especially um, assistant head coaching. Um, and now he is the head coach of the Defenders. Uh, the kicker for the team is going to be Ty Rousa. I think that's how you pronounce his name from Boise State. And uh, he was never in the NFL, but his field goal percentage at Boise State was 79%, with his long being 38 yards. And he was also 58 of 58 on extra point attempts, which doesn't really matter because in the XFL there is no such thing as an extra point. I mean, not a kicking extra point. You have to, you have to run a play and try to get it into the end zone. So... I guess his uh, extra point, his impressive extra point percentage, really doesn't mean anything. Um, then you got uh, one of the one of the wide receivers on the team is Eli Rogers. He was in the NFL briefly, uh, as a lot of these guys, if they were in the NFL, it was briefly. With the Steelers, he had 78 receptions for 822 yards and four touchdowns. Um, uh, one of the running backs is Donnell Pumphrey. He, he uh, went to college at San Diego State. He was the NCAA Division I all-time leading rusher with 6,405 yards. So this is, I mean, so far this is looking like a pretty impressive team. Um, one, another uh, running back was, is Jarrell Presley, who went to college at New Mexico. Um, and at New Mexico, he had 394 rushes for 2,725 yards, which is a 6.9 rushing average and uh, 35 touchdowns. He also caught for 202 yards and one touchdown receiving. I think he had 18 receptions. Um, and then uh, there, one of the tight ends is Donnie Ernberger, who went to college at Western Michigan. He played for Tampa Bay and Jacksonville in the NFL, again, briefly, and was the second team uh, All-MAC conference uh, selection in 2017. So, kind of an impressive collection of players there. I mean, it is probably relative to the rest of the XFL, to be sure. So, that's, that, that's my team. That's my team, the Defenders. We're going to go with that. Um, you know, I mean, it was really a choice between that, since I live in the D.C. area, or the New York Guardians, because I'm originally from New York. But I wasn't going to do that. 
And there is, like I said, I might have mentioned this on the previous XFL video, but there is no Chicago team. I would That would have been a shoe-in. I would have taken the Chicago team as my favorite team if there were one, but there isn't. So that's pretty crazy because the only, the only places they have teams, there's only like um, two, four, yeah, there's only like eight teams. D.C., Seattle, Houston, L.A., New York. Tampa Bay, Dallas, and St. Louis. That's the only teams the XFL has, at least in their inaugural or second inaugural year season. Um, so that brings us to the games. On Saturday, uh, it's going to be D.C. playing the Seattle Dragons in D.C. at Audi Stadium. Uh, I'm going to go with D.C., because they're my team and they're home. And on week one, knowing nothing really about any of the teams, I'm going to pretty much, I'm going with all the, all the home teams uh, in week one. So yeah, we're going to go with DC over Seattle. And then uh, the second game, I think it's the second game, is going to be at like five o'clock. That first game is two o'clock on ABC um, on Saturday. And then the second game is Houston. I'm going to take Houston over L.A. The game will be in Houston. The Houston Roughnecks over the L.A. Wildcats. Uh, the game will be in Houston. And I think that game is at 5 o'clock on Saturday. This coming Saturday. So then on Sunday, you've got the... Uh, I'm going to take the New York Guardians over the Tampa Bay Vipers. Because... As I say, the, the game is in New York, so I'm going to go with New York. And then I'm also going to go with Dallas over St. Louis, the Dallas Renegades over the St. Louis Battlehawks. I don't exactly know what a Battlehawk is, but I'm, I'm sure it's pretty fearsome. As are Dragons, which don't exist and never did, but, you know. So uh, that's, yeah. And so the New York-Tampa Bay game, I'm guessing, is it's a similar thing. It's going to be at like 1 or 2 o'clock on Sunday. And then the Dallas-St. Louis game will be at um, um, like 4 or 5 on Sunday. So, so that's what I got for you. Um, we'll see how it all works out. Um, I will be, uh, very soon I will be getting my Defenders jersey. I'll be sending off for that. Um, I have a mug on the way. I got all, ki all kinds of Defenders memorabilia coming because when the league goes under, <laughs> when the league goes under, I want to have my Defenders stuff and say, hey, I, ha I got the Defenders stuff before the league went under. Because you ever see those people at like, um, you know, USFL? I loved the USFL. I absolutely loved the USFL. I wish it had never gone under. It was great. That league was great. But you ever see these guys that have like, you know, you go on, you can go on eBay and you can get like um, CDs of, of different games. And I have done that. I have, I have a couple of games on CD. And you can go on and you can get, you know, like your um, Michigan Panthers stuff or um, uh, Boston Breakers or the Washington Federals. You can get all kinds of stuff on, on eBay. Um, it's great. So, but you, you pay a premium price because the league, you know, the league went under. You can't buy that stuff anymore. So, yeah. I had to go out and get, make sure I get my Defender stuff now. And then if the league keeps going on, you know, which I think is unlikely based on history, just purely based on, I mean, I'd love to see it last because it only goes from the end of the, right after the end of the football season to just past the beginning of the baseball season. So it fills that void. It's awesome. I would love to see it last, but... Um, no other competing football league has ever lasted past a few years. The USFL lasted like three or four years, and that was it. So I'd love to see it last, but I don't think it will. But what do you guys think? 
Anybody out there looking forward to the XFL? If so, what's your favorite team? Um, how much research have you done on, the, on your favorite team? Anything. I'd love to talk about it. Um, and I will be, every week I'll be doing my picks for the following week's um, XFL games, just like I did for the NFL season. And ironically, I may actually even do better at the XFL picks than I did on the NFL picks. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.